I was born with celiac disease and I was born with high acid levels. It was hectic. It was hectic to a point where my, because my parents couldn't figure out what was wrong, there was a stage where they kind of stopped me from going outside. Lack of resources, money. We're growing up in a very traditional mm. African family. When they take me to the clinics or the hospitals or doctors, um, I would go there and I would be told that I'm a stop being dramatic. They're not gonna help you from the fact that I'm being dramatic and wasting my parents' time. I'm trying to dodge school is the other thing I used to get. Don't hold back, say it loud. What's up everybody? My name is Nozibele Kamgana Mayaba. Welcome to our podcast, Don't Hold Back, in partnership with DW, Chakarande FM, and East Coast Radio. Don't forget that we are on season two. You know, what I get excited about with our podcast is that we get to tackle interesting and different topics. And today is no different. Imagine being in pain for most of your life and no one understanding what is going on. And people thinking you're overreacting, you're just acting out, you should just basically get over it. In studio today, we are hosting Princess Maoko, who has suffered from a disease called celiac. Let's hear more about it. Princess, welcome to studio. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm, I'm so honored to be here. Yay! I'm excited <laughs> to hear that. Thank you so much for making the time. Before we get into it, you know, it's standard procedure. I ask all of our guests to bring in a snack. Mm -hmm. Hey, mm -hmm. I see something very different, something that we've never had before. Don't tell me why you brought this in studio, but tell the viewers what you, you did bring. So I brought in some carrots that I chopped up earlier today, so they are nice and fresh. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. I want the story behind it, and I'm going to ask you about it later on. Okay. And we obviously, we are going to share a plate of carrots. <laughs> I can tell you're not that impressed. <laughs> I hear carrots are very good for your eyesight. Mm. Yeah, man. So I'm excited. Okay. Yeah, you gain something. <laughs> okay. So le let's get serious. I, I started talking about, you know, imagining how y you suffer and in pain for most of your life and no one understanding what is going on. Mm. You suffer from a disease called celiac. Yes. What is that? So celiac disease is basically being allergic to gluten. So if you ingest food that contains gluten, it's your system will kick it out through you experiencing symptoms of diarrhea. You obviously get a lot of tummy cramps. You also get skin breakouts. So okay. you get sores in your skin. Sometimes some of the symptoms that I experienced was headaches. My temperature would go up, but that was at a much more advanced stage. So basically celiac disease is being allergic to gluten. Okay, so when did it start? What, what, what did you notice? At, at what age did all of this come to be? I was born with celiac disease. It's a genetic disease. So my siblings are fine. I have three siblings. Okay. My parents are fine. My dad has symptoms of allergies so we are suspecting that it's from him but because of finances at home we're not able to test everyone because mm. that's what's supposed to happen uh, but I ended up being the one who gets tested because of how sick I got but I had always been sick for all my life so I was sick for 19 years before I was diagnosed because I got diagnosed in 2012 when I was 19 mm. but I had been sick all my life so when I was younger I used to have isgala mm. for people who don't understand that's a closer word it's like marks on your body it looks like maps and mm. your skin is like swollen and they are red and they are itchy and painful so i used to experience a lot of those my parents used to use what we call color mine mm. to relieve them so i used to look like umqueta oh, which is like an initiate mm. so the, the cream they use when you, they go up to the mountains is what they used to use on me it helps to prevent itching but, but I can imagine that's more of a reactive pushing um, more than getting into what the real problem the real is. The root of the problem is. So that's that's what they could come up because also they didn't know what was wrong. Mm. So at first they used to think that it's nature, which is also part of it. But they used to think like it's nature. I'm reacting to flowers or stuff outside. They used to try to keep me indoors. Around three years, I think that's when my mom started figuring it out that, okay, because that's when I started eating like real proper proper food. So that's when she started noticing because I stopped eating umnosho at a very young age, which is semp and bin. She stopped me because she was like, no, that's when I noticed that we don't sleep if you eat semp and bins. Okay. So then they would always make sure there's rice on the side for me. But because once again, financial difficulties. So it was between those two meals. Okay. So if 
talk me through what you need to avoid what or what did you need to avoid to make sure okay you don't now we have already noted semp and beans mm. so you ate rice and, and with what could you eat and you could not eat so at the time they hadn't really figured out that it's food allergies they didn't know my mom just noticed so she just thought i have a problem with just semp and beans yes so that i would eat rice with everything else which was still a problem because Apparently, I'm not supposed to use the, the normal kind of cooking oil. I'm not supposed to have milk because here's the other problem. I was born with celiac disease and I was born with high acid levels. So these are two. It's like I have two diseases that want clashing diets. Sure. So the high, the high acid levels were what was causing me to have problems when I would ingest stuff, dairy products. Mm. So milk... C- cereals contain yeah. um, wheat, which is a, a, um, a group under gluten. Mm. So I think in this instance, it's important for people to educate themselves about the types of food groups. Mm. Because then had I known that at an early age, all this could have been prevented. I mean, though, I'd let's be very, very realistic. Um, lack of resources, money. We're growing up in a very traditional mm. African family. A lack of information. Lack the of first information. The head was brought in by Zola Seven. Yeah, so it, it's a lot. Yo, but growing up must have been tough. It was hectic. It was hectic to a point where my, because my parents couldn't figure out what was wrong, there was a stage where they kind of stopped me from going outside. Because then it, we used to walk to school like an hour to school and they noticed that I react to some flowers. So they picked up hints here and there. Mm. I would come back to school. They would be called by the school. Oh, princess has turned and being light skinned. It was like scary because now, hey, she's red. Please come fetch your child. Shoo. They also don't know what to do, mm. the teachers, how to help me. So my parents would have to come fetch me when they take me to the doctor, which is the sad part when they take me to the clinics or the hospitals or doctors i would go there and i would be told that i must stop being dramatic um i cannot have food but, allergies uh, because wait, I, I'm, I'm an assu- african but i'm assuming they can see the reaction yeah. from your skin so which was the puzzling part where do where do they think that is coming from? I have no idea because then that's the question my mother used to ask. So my child is dramatic. What then tell me what is causing the skin outbreaks? That's the answer they couldn't give. So they are already annoyed from that. They're not going to help you from the fact that I'm being dramatic and wasting my parents' time. Uh, I'm trying to dodge school is the other thing I used to get. No, she just wants to dodge school. She didn't do her homework. She just wants to bunk school. Um, so it went on for the longest time. I The other issue that I had now, it started getting into me getting bullied because of the weight gain. So at the younger age, I was chubby. Mm. And it was, we didn't know, but it was part of this. Mm. So it was caused by the wrong foods that I was eating. So then my body reacts by getting swollen and people think I'm gaining weight. But Mm. no, it's my body telling them something is wrong. So you you mentioned that at one point, parents told you not to go outside, Mm. right? What other aspects of your life were affected by, by the school uh, wait, tell me about it. So b- making friends, school, my confidence levels, mm-hmm. like my self-esteem, because then, you know, you are just that weird kid now when you're back at school. Where have you been? We, we so you would been. skip school for a period of time? Yeah, like sometimes I would have to skip school because of how I would also be looking because then them sending me to school is like sending me to a bunch of vultures that mm-hmm. are just ready to attack. Like, why do you look like that? Their kids, I yeah. understand they didn't know at the time, but... And I hear you you had to stop school for a, a, a long period of time around matric, if I'm... Yes. So then I went through most of my life. I think we had kind of like figured out some of the stuff. So my mom cut me out of those in terms of food. So when I was in grade 12, that's where it got drastically bad. Okay. So grade 12, I was... Yo, you, I looked like... So what happened... I I had gained a lot of weight and this lady from church called me aside one Sunday and she's like, "Um, Princess, I know this is a a touchy subject, but I think something is wrong with your health. I don't think you are chubby. 
just naturally because mm. you look like if I were to take a needle and poke you, sure. you pop mm. and that's not good. Mm. Um, so then she was like, I have a friend who's a nurse at St. Mary's, which is a hospital in Tata, which is where I'm from. Mm. And she was like, I can ask her for a favor just to take some blood samples yes. because I think if we can do that, then we can figure out what's wrong. Correct. So she took me to the friend and all of a sudden, like from there on, like it just started getting worse. I was getting the skin outbreaks, which had kind of stopped for some time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then everything just came back all at once. The headaches, the, the high temperatures, the skin outbreaks, the weight. Um, so the lady took the samples. I don't know what happened to them because I never really got help out of that situation. Okay. But it's what started my journey to getting diagnosed. Okay. Um, so then other people also started wanting to help. I, I went through a lot of doctors in Tata, East London. And no one could tell us exactly what was wrong. They just kept giving me medication. And my mother has a sister here in Johannesburg in Ferriena Heng. And she was like, let's come try the Johannesburg doctors. I think they were also trying to pull me out of the bullying situation that was going because I was getting bullied a lot at school. Mm. So we came to Johannesburg and we tried the doctors this side. People are still studying. I'm in grade 12. People are continuing with classes. I stayed this side. I don't know for how long we were here because I was dragged up most of the time. So I can't, I remember bits and pieces Mm. of 2012. Um, We finally found a doctor who took my blood and then sent it for testing. And then results came back and he was like, no, this child has celiac disease. We need to stop her from eating everything immediately until we figure out what What? goes with her system. Yeah. Uh, So because... Uh, With celiac disease, some other people can show symptoms, others do not. Okay. So another person, my sister, for example, could be having it, but it won't be active. Uh, Yes, Uh, and as reactive. React. Yeah. So he was like, then we need to figure out the. We can't just take for granted that just because a person who has celiac disease reacts to wheat products, so like normal bread then we're just going to say we're going to cut that out mm-hmm. and just give her any other bread. We need to figure out which other bread yes. out of the, all the bread types that are there. We so probably then, need to change the, her whole diet as yes, well. Mm-hmm. which is what he said, that I actually need a dietitian. So I need a doctor on standby. I need a dietitian because should I eat something wrong by mistake, like someone forgets, simple thing like you cook a beef stew and then you take the soup that comes out of there Mm. um, and then you mix it with something else and then you give me to eat you might have not necessarily given me the beef but that soup that you took from the beef is enough to make me sick so at this point because i'd stayed for so long being not being diagnosed it's a danger because it eats away at your small intestine Mm. the disease when you keep eating the wrong stuff Mm. so something could uh, there could be a medical emergency so he was like i need a a doctor and a dietitian for life and then i need to be on medication obviously so yes i did get diagnosed and then what we did was for one week i would have to eat rice and then they see how i react so that they know that rice is not good for me and then carrots so once they figured out the rice then i could have carrots and then if I'm not reacting to those two things, they know that, okay, they can give me this Both. for the week okay. to, to eat. That's how then we started figuring things out. Um, and then one day I woke up, I asked my mother, have the grade 12 learners written the trial exams, which is what you write before yes. your finals? She's like, no, they're studying next week. I'm like, I'd like to go try. Ma'am. <laughs> because uh, in the school, what had happened before we came to Joe back, just to backtrack a little bit so that people understand, before we came, because of the bullying that was happening, my mom and dad used to take turns to bath me in mm. the morning and then bandage my legs because I had three blisters, four blisters this side. My oh, legs gosh. were like humongous. I couldn't mm. walk. So the school came up with a plan that I should wear winter uniform. Our winter uniform okay. was a track suit. Yes. So they were like, they must put on the bandages and then make me wear a yes. track suit on top so that it, it's not that visible. Even though it still made me stand out because then everyone else is wearing skirts, which is summer uniform. Correct. But it helped in a way because then the, the, the 
the sores are not out yes. today, like in people's eyes. But Princess, you went to write your, your yes. trial exam without studying? Yes. And you passed? Yes. <laughs> and you went for a final and you passed? Okay. You know what? I'm, I'm sitting with a genius <laughs> because I don't know how you did that. I think my mother just allowed me because she just wanted to do something for me because I, I could tell she and my dad, like, you know, you, you see it in your parents' eyes mm. that they wanted to take the pain away and mm. they couldn't. And I think that's part of the reason why she let me go to write. Yeah. Because then she asked me, what are you going to write? And you, you haven't been studying all this time. Yeah. Yeah, and I think for them it was kind of like they want to protect me from the disappointment of failing mm -hmm. because I went to write without studying. Mm -hmm. But then they also wanted to make me happy yes. like by giving me what I want. Mm -hmm. uh, but then she allowed me. I went. I remember when I went to write my final exams or going to write maths. I got there and like people are discussing outside the hall. Yeah, did you practice these equations? And I'm like. Mm, yeah, yo, the trigonometry, yo, it got me. It, and I was like lying and because when, I didn't study anything. But then I was like there and I was like, I'm trusting God. I'm like, mm. God, I, I, I did my part beginning of the year. You'll take over. Mm. Yeah. And you did well. Yeah, I did. I remember the pride on my dad's face oh. when the results came out in January the next year. Like he just walked into the room with just this big smile oh, on his face. Gosh. And like he didn't say anything, <laughs> but I knew. <laughs> he didn't say anything, but I I knew. Mm. I knew. And then after he just gave me the biggest hug ever, the whole family came through. It was a big celebration. Now, listen, I want to do a quick um, quiz with you. It's called Rapid Fire Questions. Mm. Ten seconds and less. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Do mm. not think too hard about it. Okay. Okay. You, you ready? I hope so. <laughs> Favorite dress, Kyla? I think I know. Pink. Oh, not red? Mm -mm. Okay. <laughs> What's your favorite Sunday lunch recipe? Um, rice, chicken, veggies. Nice. Um, an hour of Instagram or an hour outside exercising? Outside exercising. Okay. I hate <laughs> social media. I just do it because I'm a journalist. Oh, uh, my word. <laughs> <laughs> Where will I find you on a Saturday night? Uh, at home watching movies with my baby sister. Cool. Top three dream destinations. Oh, mm. oh, Mauritius. Yes. Um, oh, Mauritius, Mauritius. It's African countries, though. It's African destinations. I'd okay. love to see. I'd love to see the whole of Africa. Mm. Let me just say that. Mm. But I, I don't know of the specific. Madagascar. Mauritius. Madagascar. Kenya? Yes. Seashells? <sighs> I, I, I don't know about that one. Okay. Yeah. Some, uh, some, some other African. What? Ooh, Zanzibar? Yes. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah. yeah. I know. Are you going to pay for it? Mm -mm. Okay. <laughs> This is, I need a holiday myself, okay? <laughs> I have a, a few destinations that I would like to also go to. Yeah, okay? maybe we need to start learning how to save them. Yeah. We wouldn't be dreaming all day. We would yeah. actually be living the dreams that we want. Well, that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. You schooled me right there. Okay. Listen, uh, a princess, uh, before I go into my last question, let me ask, so what do you now eat? Mm. What can you eat? Rice? Is it a yes. specific rice? Brown rice. Okay. Um, so brown what rice. What would be a typical? Yeah. What would be a typical Sunday meal? Brown rice, beetroot, chicken, and carrots. Okay. Uh, so sometimes the, potatoes, mm -hmm. like different kinds of veggies. I play around those, but it's always rice. And the chicken, you need to make it a specific way. What What do you avoid? Yeah, I keep it simple. Just cook it with water. Uh, then salt because then here's the tricky thing with uh, celiac and the spices which is something that I also because this is a an ongoing journey yes. I'm discovering things every day so it's not to say that I'm also an expert mm. I need other people's advices as well but I recently discovered that even in the the Nutella for example mm -hmm. what we use to butter our bread it has wheat mm. so I'm like oh my goodness what am I supposed to eat spices have wheat Bread has wheat. Most products have wheat, like impupu to make bap yes. has wheat. So there's just so many things. I've ended up creating my own diet mm. where I say it's an almost gluten, mm -hmm. almost acidic and dairy product free. 
sure. because I cannot afford to say I'm going to cut out all the dairy, I'm going to cut out all the gluten without the help of doctors mm. because first of all, it's difficult to get these products at the shops. I can imagine. When you do get them, the prices it's are, expensive. are sky high. So it's really, it's really hectic, but I try my level best to stick to it. Mm. So I eat what I know that I don't react to if I'm going to touch on something that has a bit of gluten in it. Mm. If you're going to get a doctor that's going to tell you that you cannot say you have um, food allergies because you are an African and because you can't afford, you, we can't be having such. Mm. There's kids that probably have parents who think that. Mm. And I'm not the only person in the world who's suffering from celiac disease. So what, what about other kids mm. that have those parents that think such? Mm. That means already you're not getting attention, the attention you need from the parent who's supposed to help you get the help you need. Today you have totally schooled me because once again, I have a totally new perspective. Firstly, of the journey that you have traveled with your parents, but I'm hoping it's going to ignite some kind of conversation and also bring about a new perspective to anyone who's watching and, and any parent that you know might go through or is going through this um, also. So thank you so much for sharing your story. I honestly appreciate it. It's going to help a lot of people. It's really going to help a lot of people. That's my hope because I, I was hoping that people will not necessarily feel pity for me. Mm. I want people to gain knowledge from yeah. this, knowledge that they can use to help someone else out. I want someone who's watching this episode to be like, hmm, I have a cousin who has yeah. those symptoms. Mm. So maybe they should go get checked out or think about themselves, what they are mm. going through. If maybe they are, they are seeing some similarities, they must pay attention. Yeah. Okay. Let, let's go to the carrots. Mm -hmm. what, I think I know now, now that we've spoken about mm -hmm. it, uh, the story behind the, the carrots, but not to take away, yeah, w w what's the story behind the carrots? Are you sorry for judging me first? I'm not. I, I did not <laughs> judge you. <laughs> you did. I was just very interested uh, at the carrots. They're very nicely shaped. Thank and chopped. You. Thank you. <laughs> What's the story behind the carrots? Um, so the carrots, uh, the, the story is simple. It's because of mm. what I've been suffering um, from, which is celiac disease, but also because growing up in a family that was financially uh, struggling, we we didn't have many food options, yeah. but we never went hungry because my mom and dad had land mm. and they taught us how to use the land to Mm. grow food for ourselves mm. so we always had veggies even if it's going to be dry rice with the veggies but we had food in our tummies mm. um, I, I think like which that. informed most of my decisions in life later on that make use of the little that you have mm. so the carrots take me back to that that background that you, you can always make something beautiful out of nothing and look at where you are now Thank you. Let's have some carrots. Yes. And the bonus, yeah. They're very good for your eyes mm -hmm. as well. So, mm, it's going to help them with my diet as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'll draw up something for you. That will be great. <laughs> Except it mustn't be dry rice. No, it won't. I, know, I like my won't. rice very savory. Yeah, no, I know. Okay. I'll come up with something nice for you, trust okay. me. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much once again, Princess Wu, for joining us, okay? No problem. Thank you so much. It was an honor to be here. Great. Guys, that is where we leave it for today. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. This has been Don't Hold Back, a podcast in collaboration with DW, Jacaranda FM, and East Coast Radio. Please catch this episode and many other episodes on wherever you get your podcasts or on YouTube. Until next time, my name is Nozibele Kamganamayaba. <laughs>